Hi everyone and welcome to today's tutorial. This is going to be a collaboration video with a channel called Devil Cube Designs and uh, this is the channel. So the first part of the tutorial is on making the logo and uh, Devil Cube Designs has made the logo in Adobe Illustrator and so I'm going to be using the file as a second part to the tutorial series and I hope you enjoyed the video. So to start off I'm just going to bring the files into uh, Adobe After Effects which is what we're going to be animating the logo in. So I've separated out each of the individual layers into the separate parts. So I've separated out each of the individual elements. I did this by going into the Illustrator file and just putting them on separate layers and exporting them separately. Uh, and then you can import them as individual layers. So I'm now going to create a composition. It's going to be 1920 by 1080. I'm going to call it Logo Animation. And bam. So now what we're going to do is drop in all of the uh, elements. So let's just whack them on here. And bam. Okay, so this is going to need a bit of sorting. So we've got uh, text, which is going to go on top. And then there's uh, the right sword, which I think goes under that. There. there we go. So this is the logo, uh, and this is essentially what we're going to be animating. So what I'm going to do first of all is just create a background. So I'm going to create a solid. Uh, let's just go for a sort of light colored, creamy solid, like this sort of color. Okay, so we have uh, this, and essentially what I'm going to be doing is just showing you how to do some very, very basic animation. And I still don't really like the color of that background. Let's change it to even lighter. There we go. That's perfect. Cool. So what we're first going to do is just put the swords into the right uh, category. So we've got uh, basically it's split up into six layers. We've got the text at the top, we've got uh, the right sword, the left sword, and then the background. So the first thing I'm going to do is just put all the swords and their backgrounds into the same composition. So just pre-compose them. So let's select the left sword and the left sword background. Press Control Shift C. Just bring it into the right window, and let's call this left sword. And then uh, let's do the right sword as well. Okay, so now we have the text, right sword, and the left sword. And if I turn them off, you can see I have individual um, sort of control over each one. So the first thing I'm going to do, because it's swords, I'm going to have them sort of animate in diagonally like this, so they're going to come together and clash. So uh, first thing I want to do is just press P on the swords and keyframe the position for both. So they're going to start off, uh, let's say they're going to start off here. This one's going to start off down here. And let's say like this far in, we want them to shoot in and go bam into that position. This one's going to come in as well and go bam. So we're just going to line them up uh, with the edge of the frame like this so they go back to the position they were in originally. And then let's just watch that back. So, and as you can see, that's way too slow. So I'm just going to select the keyframes and move them back to a speed that I am more happy with. So let's bring them back to about here. That's better. And then what I'm also going to do is just easy ease them in. So what this does is basically if you go if you right click on the keyframe, go keyframe assistant and easy ease, it kind of has a fall off effect. So instead of just coming to a harsh stop, it kind of ramps off and the speed slows down as they get to the end of the animation. So like that. I think that looks better. Uh, but I think I want them to come in after the text has come in. So I'm actually going to select both of the keyframes and move them to about here just for now. And I'm going to do something with the text. So um, let's do like a sort of warp effect. So if we add uh, turbulent displacement by the way, uh, what I just did there is I press shift space and the effects console comes up. This is actually a video copilot plugin, uh, so this won't be on your After Effects by default. So if you want to get the effects, then they're normally over here and you just have to type in turbulent displace and it's right there. But anyway, so we're adding turbulent displacement. So what we're going to do is if we start off, um, let's, let's increase the amount a little bit so it's a bit more sort of uh, distorted. And I'm going to decrease the size so that the details are a lot smaller so you can see like that. Okay, and then I'm going to keyframe the evolution. So let's go, uh, just click the stopwatch next to evolution to start the keyframing. Go to about here and increase the evolution like that. Uh, we probably don't want to go mental. Let's just do like seven and see how fast that is. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, I quite like that speed. Obviously, you can do it to however much you like. Uh, and then I think what we're going to do is slow down the amount. So let's do amount. And about here, we're going to go zero. And then it's like, bam. I think I actually want it to be a bit more mental at the start. So let's go for size and make it a bit bigger. There we go. I quite like that. And then the swords come in. So let's bring the swords to the right place now so that the animation starts at the right time. So boom, boom, still a bit too late. Let's go to about here. Maybe even a little bit earlier still, probably about there. Bam. Okay, so that's done. Uh, so if we just sort of have that hold for a few seconds like that. And then I think what we're going to do here is I'm going to have the swords kind of animate in 3D and fly towards the camera. Let's go like there and then add a position keyframe about here. So I'm going to make these both a 3D layer and if you don't see this tab here, what you need to do, I've got it selected so that I can see all the tabs but normally this is off and you see toggle switches and modes and by default you see this and if you click this then you can see the 3D option and to make a layer 3D you want to click the box next to the layer under this cube thing here. 
So we want the right sword and the left sword to be 3D layers. So I'm going to click these. Uh, and I'm also going to show the uh, all of the boxes again. Cool. And then what we want to do is keyframe the orientation for each one. Uh, and then I'm going to go to about here. And let's just start on the right hand sword. So I'm going to press W for the rotation tool. And I'm going to have it sort of rotate this way and this way a bit. And then maybe down a little bit more like that. Uh, and then sort of come this way. And let's see how that looks. So it's like, there we go. Maybe a little bit faster. And then have it fly straight off towards the camera. So uh, that would be in this direction. You kind of have to play with this to get the perspective right. But that's looking pretty good. Let's just bring it all the way off frame like that. Uh, and then let's see how that looks. So it goes whoosh. And there's a bit of a weird gap there. So let's just press U to see all the keyframes. Let's just speed this bit up a bit. So let's bring that to there and that to there. And then there we go. That's a lot better. And I'm going to easy ease uh, this keyframe as well because there's a little bit of a weird jump between the animation. So like that. Perfect. And then let's do the other one. So we want to go to the left sword. And then that should work. Cool. There we go. Okay, so that's working. And now one other thing you can do is add motion blur. So any effects that are 3D that you've animated in After Effects, you can set this box here to add motion blur. So when they start moving, uh, After Effects actually enables motion blur. But you have to enable it for the composition. So if we click this box up here, that, that should enable it. There we go. So you can see they blur when they move now, which looks really awesome. So they come in with the blur. That looks nice. And then there's a few seconds of the logo, and then they animate out. And then I think we'll just do something to get this to fade away as well. I think what I want to do is a cool dissolve effect for the uh, actual logo leaving. So what I'm going to do is create a new solid by pressing Control Y. Uh, I'm going to call this Dissolve. And then I'm going to add a um, fractal noise uh, effect to this. OK, so instantly I'm going to increase the contrast quite a lot. So it's pretty much black and white like that. We want it to be really contrasty, and you'll see why in a second. Uh, I'm going to increase the brightness a little bit, not too much. In fact, actually, I might go down slightly. Yeah, that looks better. Um, obviously, you can play with this as you as you see fit. So we want the animation to start back here. So let's press Alt and open square bracket, and then uh, that will cut off the before part of the clip. Uh, and then we'll turn it back on, obviously. And let's keyframe the evolution. So let's go evolution, add a keyframe, and then go to about here, and set it to like 5, maybe. And what that does is just makes the, the noise kind of animate. Yeah, that looks really cool. So now what we're going to do is use this noise pattern that we created to basically make the dissolve effect for the uh, text animation. So if we go to track mat here and we set it to inverted luma mat, uh, it will use the top layer as kind of like a, a mask. And anything that's really bright is going to cut a hole in it. Anything that's really dark is going to leave it completely opaque. So as you can see, it's animating and um, it looks really cool. Uh, and you can actually use this just sort of on its own to do a cool effect for the logo if you want. So you could have this. It's a bit too much for me, so I'm just going to use it for the dissolve effect. But essentially what I'm going to do is start the uh, brightness about here. And then here, I'm going to set the brightness so high that it basically cuts off everything. And then as you can see, that dissolves the logo. So it goes like that. I think that's pretty much all the animation we want to do. So let's just have a look at it one more time. So it kind of comes in like that with the ripple effect. The swords animate in with the motion blur. We've got a few seconds of it holding. The swords fly out and then it dissolves. So there you go, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this collaboration video. Once again, the first part is made by Devil Cube Design. So make sure you go over to see how the logo was made in Adobe Illustrator. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.